Today on BRS TV Refacts, it's Neptune Apex Solidity Probe Tips and Tricks. Hi, I'm Randy, your host of BRS TV Refacts, where it's all about quick, straight to the point answers to those questions that reefers ask all the time. Today we answer, what are some tips and tricks to using the Apex Salinity Probe? This is a super common question, and I'm gonna talk about three most common ways for reefers to achieve the best results with their Apex Salinity Probe, and that is consistent calibration procedures, careful probe handling, and intentional probe placement. So step one is consistent calibration procedures. That means giving an added level of care and attention to calibrating the Salinity Probe each and every time you use it. For example, taking five to 10 minutes to temperature acclimate the calibration solution in tank water, and at the same time, conducting the entire calibration process while the solution is still floating in the tank. Along with that, you wanna make sure the salinity probe tip is completely dry before calibration by gently shaking it off, then submerge it fully into the calibration solution, which is best done at an angle. Attention to this step will better allow any air bubbles inside the probe to escape through the holes in the probe housing. I do this with those holes facing up and add the extra step of gently shaking it in the solution to get all of the air out. With the calibration prep work done, just follow the tasks function prompts through to the end and then come back after calibrating to validate by drying the probe completely, placing it back into the calibration solution as we did initially, and wait for the reading on your Fusion dashboard to settle. Again, all of this should be done while the calibration solution is still floating in the tank water. Second way to get the best performance from your salinity probe, handle it carefully. Gentle handling is a must for these sensitive probes, meaning we have to be careful to avoid excessive bumping, tapping, and rough handling to protect the inner components. That in mind, whenever you need to move the probe or dry it for calibration, do so carefully. Finally, to get the most accuracy out of your salinity probe, we need to put some extra thought into where we place it in the tanker sump. One of the tricks here is to place the probe in a spot that has the least amount of bubbles. None at all is best. These bubbles could cause readings to drift upward or downward over time. Another trick for placing the probe will be somewhere where there's an active amount of flow through the sensor. The return pump chamber is a good choice where there's typically enough flow, but you could also go a step further and install it at a slight angle, like we did with the calibration solution packet, where one of the air bubble escape holes is facing upward. Okay, the last tip for probe placement deals with possible electrical interference. The salinity probe may be somewhat sensitive to outside electrical interference, meaning that it's just best practice to have the probe itself and probe cord in a spot that is somewhat distance away from other electrical equipment in general. I wouldn't spend a ton of time overthinking this, but just give the probe some space in the sump away from other pumps or other gear and simply route the cord to the controller on a path of its own. Let me leave you with a couple of quick troubleshooting tips. Erratic readings from the probe could likely be caused from either bubbles or electrical noise. If it's bubbles, give the probe a gentle shake in the tank and watch for the readings to settle after about five to 10 minutes. Or if you suspect electrical interference, try shutting off equipment near the probe to potentially ID any gear that may be causing the issue. Outside of that, from my personal experience using the Neptune Salinity Probe, it seems common for the reading to fluctuate slightly up or down within a single part per thousand. But I found that so long as the readings are stable over time, I can easily tell when something goes awry in the tank and then get alerted by setting up probe alerts to do something about it immediately. Well, that wraps up this refact. To learn how a Neptune Apex breakout box can unlock hidden potential in your Apex, click that top video. And to see a basic Apex setup guide, click the video on the bottom. Click the link in the lower left to check out more preferred reefer perks, like refunds up to 500 bucks or free shopping carts each week. And we'll see you on the next refacts.